Today is wine shopping day at Costco. I went out to my local club in search of the latest releases under the Kirkland Signature label. These are the wines that are sold exclusively through Costco. I found six wines that caught my attention, all of which are under $20 per bottle. Three of them are under 10. Hi, I'm Bob Polinski, Master of Wine. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Of the six wines that I picked up, a few of these I've reviewed previously. I'll now provide you some updates on the most current vintage releases. With the others, I'll be tasting them for the very first time. In addition, while I was out shopping, I found something that was a fantastic deal. Picked it up, brought it home, tried it, loved it, went back to the club to pick up another. I'll include that in this tasting as well. With Costco, some of the wines will be available year-round. Others are seasonal. So my advice is, if there's something here that catches your attention, don't delay. I would pick it up as quick as you can. The first wine up is the 2023 Kirkland Signature Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand for $7.49. Several months ago, I tasted the 2022 vintage of this wine in a previous video. I thought the quality for the money was absolutely outstanding. This is the 23. This has just been released. 23 from Marlboro is a very plentiful vintage. There should be good quantities of this wine over the, over the course of the year. Also with Marlboro, Marlboro is far and away the primary source for exports from New Zealand. Most of the wine coming out of that area will be Sauvignon Blanc. In terms of appearance, this wine looks exactly as it should. It's pale in color, it has that very youthful appearance, and there's a slight greenish tinge, which is really quite common with Sauvignon Blanc. The aroma is all primary fruit, very lifted, bright, there's good purity to it. Uh, it has a citrus passion fruit characteristic, and there's a little bit of a peppery characteristic to it as well, which is actually uh, quite appealing. On the palate, all that fresh, bright character does follow through. There's good acidity. And with Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc, that is one of the telltale markers of, of wines from that area. They're bright and very lifted on the palate, and that's exactly what you get with this wine. Now, oftentimes, white wines are served too cold, and that'll tap down some of the aroma and some of the uh, appealing character of the wine. In this case, I would serve this wine quite cold. It's so fresh and bright and clean and zesty. I think the uh, cold temp will actually benefit this wine. Comparing this to the 22 vintage, which I had some months back, this is actually quite similar. I think this one may be just a bit lighter in body and a little bit softer than the previous. But this is a very good example of Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc. And for the money, it's an absolute steal. Next up is the 2022 Kirkland Signature Melbeck from Mendoza, Argentina for $6.99. Last year, I thought this was one of the best values under the Kirkland Signature label for under $10. So I'm curious to see how this one shows. Last year, I reviewed the 21 vintage. This is the 2022. And the color is really very encouraging. There's good density. Uh, it looks like a good amount of extraction in this wine. Very little fade as you get out to the rim of the glass and very typical of youthful Argentine Melbeck. It'll show a purple color and that's exactly what this wine has. Really beautiful aromatics. It's very lifted. There's a red fruit character, plum, uh, dark cherry characteristic, and a bit of, of smoky oak as well. Looking at the back label, it shows that this wine has been aged 12 months of careful aging in French oak barrels. Well, I'm glad it's careful and not reckless aging, uh, but I would imagine this is not new oak. There's no chance of that for, for this type of money, but it does have a little bit of that smoky characteristic, which brings a little more interest and complexity to it. On the palate, it's uh, quite weighty. It's smooth, round, rich, uh, very ripe. Oftentimes with inexpensive reds, you'll find that uh, the wines can have a decent amount of alcohol, meaning that the fruit did attain a good level of, of ripeness in terms of sugar, but sometimes they're lacking in phenolic ripeness. And the wines will have a bit of a hollow character, or they can come across a little bit green. This wine does not have that. It really is, is seamlessly smooth. There's good weight to it. I think this is a little bit of a softer, rounder style versus the previous vintage, but a, a very good wine. 
This is something that if you picked up a case of this and you drank it over the course of the next year or so, it's not going to disappoint you. It's really a wonderful wine for very cheap. If you've not yet subscribed to my channel, please do it right now. It very much does help. Also hit the like button and definitely hit the notification bell. That way you'll be kept up to speed on all things happening here. Next up is the 2021 Kirkland Signature Bordeaux Superior for $6.99. This is Bordeaux at its most basic level, actually just a slight tick above that. Uh, this wine is 60% Cabernet Sauvignon, 40% Merlot. Oftentimes, Bordeaux Superior will oftentimes be flipped. Usually, it's a bit more Merlot. Uh, but this is interesting that it's primarily Cabernet. It's the 2021 vintage. Uh, I've tried the 2020, which I thought was really quite solid. The 21 is the end of three very good vintages in Bordeaux. 18, 19, and 20 were generally very good for the red wines from, from that part of the world. 21 tends to be a little lighter, a little less concentration to it. A few weeks back, I went to a trade tasting in San Francisco where I had a good chance to taste a broad range of the top chateaus. And even at the very high end, some of the wines just were not showing as, as well as previous vintages. So I'm curious to see what this one shows. Uh, the color density is not bad. There's some fade as you get out to the edge of the glass, but generally speaking, the color on this looks, looks to be quite good. The aroma on it is very muted. Really not getting a whole lot of aroma at all. There's a little bit of a cassis, black fruit, blackberry characteristic to it, but uh, not a whole lot in terms of aromatics. On the palate, it's, it's really simple. Straightforward, well-made. Uh, not a lot of depth to it. There's no, no obvious flaws in this wine. It's rather soft, but it's simple. It's very one-dimensional. Uh, not a bad bottle of wine. And if you're into Bordeaux and you want to try something at the entry level, this wine is worth picking up. But I think there's better options for about the same money. Next is the 2019 Kirkland Signature Rioja Reserva from Spain for $7.99. So I must admit, I was excited when I spotted this wine. This has potential written all over it. Uh, recently, I was in Spain. I spent several days in the Rioja. I've tasted many of these wines just very, very recently. So I'm curious to see how this stacks up. This one has a nice touch on the cork. It has the branded Rioja call out. Uh, this wine has spent 30 months in oak and six months in bottle prior to release. That is a significant amount of time in oak for this minimal cost. The appearance of the wine is, is really what I would expect. It does have a bit of that oxidative character. So there's some fade. There's not uh, tremendous density in terms of color. Very typical for a wine like this. Love the way this smells. Uh, this has a dark cherry characteristic to it. There's a little bit of a, a smoky, savory spice note as well. Very pretty aromatics. It's not what I would call very overt. It's not that in-your-face style, but more of a subtle nuance character to it. But it smells wonderful. On the palate, nice weight. Very, very soft. Uh, good length on it. Has that presence right through to the back palate. Definitely do get some of that wood character. So if you're a fan of, of wines that have more of that, that smoke, oak characteristic to it, that's definitely what you'll find here. Uh, it actually, the aroma reminds me a little bit of coconut as well. Kind of an interesting little twist, but the wine is soft. It has good length to it. And to find a wine that actually has some bottle age to it for this type of money is just a, a screaming value. I really love this wine. And if you're a fan of traditional style of Rioja, this is something you should definitely take a look at. Next is the 2020 Kirkland Signature St. Julian from the left bank of Bordeaux for $17.99. This is the single most expensive wine in today's tasting. And St. Julian is really a prestige area on the left bank of Bordeaux. There's a number of great classified Bordeaux that come from, from that region. Uh, the back label on this threw me for a little bit of a loop. Uh, it shows that the blend on this wine is 76% Merlot, 24% Cab Sauve. That's actually quite unusual for this part of Bordeaux. Usually it's flipped. 
Uh, so I'm curious to see how that shows. It's from the 2020 vintage, which was an outstanding vintage in that part of the world. So it does have that going for it. I don't know where this wine has been sourced, uh, so I really can't give you much of a story on that. The color on this is quite encouraging. It's deep, it's dense, there's a good depth at the core. It really looks quite appealing. Interesting aroma. Uh, there's that cassis black fruit character, some smoked spice notes as well, uh, a little bit of a vanilla characteristic. But it's not overt. It's more of a restrained, refined style. Again, not all that uncommon for this part of the world. And I imagine with a little bit of aeration, this wine probably will show much more in terms of aroma. On the palate, wine's really quite nice. Uh, extremely smooth. I mean, there's not enough O's and smooth to describe this wine. It's soft, it's round, there's good weight, nice length to it. Uh, moderate complexity. I think this is really a very well-made wine from start to finish. Now, looking at the money on this, uh, my feeling is you can find estate bottled petite chateaus that are every bit as good as this or better. Uh, but again, solid wine. I don't think you'll be disappointed with this. But if you're in the Bordeaux, uh, I would suggest maybe dig into some of those other uh, smaller chateaus that can bring some fantastic value. I think they're more interesting than what, what I have here. Next up is the 2021 Kirkland Signature Gigandas from the Southern Rhone in France, $13.99. This next one is one I am super excited about. I have tried to find this at Costco for the last few years, had no luck, finally cashed in. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Gigandas. I've been a fan of these wines for the better part of 40 years. And over that time, the notoriety just continues to get ratcheted up, and as do the prices. So for the longest time, Jigandas represented one of the greatest values in the Southern Rhone. Uh, those prices have nudged up, but this one in the mid-teens caught my interest. I thought if this one can deliver, it's going to be just a tremendous value and uh, kind of a cool cork as well. So Gigandas is down in the southern part of the Rhone Valley. Uh, it's an area where you'll find areas like Vakiras and Chateauneuf de Pop, very well known. Uh, this is made from what is commonly called the Holy Trinity from the southern Rhone. It's primarily Grenache. Uh, in this case, it's 85% Grenache. There is 10% Syrah and 5% Morvedra. Very common in that part of the world. Some of the, my absolute favorite wines, I drink Southern Rhone wines often, so I'm really curious to see what this brings. The color of this is medium deep. Uh, generally, these are wines that are not opaque. Uh, Grenache generally will not have a huge amount of color extract to it. This being predominantly Grenache, this color is really very much in line with what I would expect. The aroma on this is really quite compelling. There's a red raspberry, lifted fruit, savory spice. There's almost a bit of a, a, a like a star anise kind of character, or like an Asian five spice. They're really interesting aromatics. I, I love the way this wine smells. And it's just been open, so I imagine with a little bit of time, it'll probably develop uh, in the glass as well. There's some serious wow factor on this wine. I mean, this is quite compelling. Uh, there's some nice weight there. It's not heavy. Everything is balanced, but there's certainly good presence on the palate. That fruit character is bright. There's good purity, nice intensity. There's enough acidity to give the wine some lift. Uh, beautiful structure on this wine from start to finish. This is really well made. Uh, look, if, you, if you're looking at Jig and Das prices, they have spiked in recent years, and you can commonly find domain bottlings that'll run you $30 plus. Uh, this at about half of that really can give those a, a good run for the money. This is just a fantastic value. So my suggestion to you is if you have picked up some running shoes from Costco, I would put them on. I would head out to the club as quick as you can. I think this wine is going to disappear very quickly. This is an absolute beauty. And last up is the 2021 headline Dry Creek Valley Zinfandel from Sonoma, 
It's on promotion at $12.99 through the end of April 2024. This last wine is the one that I talked about at the very beginning of this video. It's not part of the Kirkland Signature lineup, but it caught my attention because the value is phenomenal. Now, I'm a big fan of Zinfandel. It's one of those grape varieties that I think you either really love or, or you don't. Uh, I think it's a much maligned grape variety as well. There is an ocean of really bad Zinfandel and I think that's had an impact on the overall image for, for this wine. But the, the quality versions of it are outstanding and they're really very indicative of, of California. So I'm a big fan of them. Uh, the versions that I like the most are from Sonoma County. And that's what we have here with this one from Dry Creek. And oftentimes you'll find these wines are very, very expressive. They're big, bright, they've got intense uh, fruit characteristics to them. And this is one for me that absolutely shined when I tried this just a, a few days ago. And with Zin, oftentimes the color of Zin is just moderately deep. And it's a bit of a wacky grape variety. Uh, when you look at the vines at harvest time, sometimes you can find uh, fruit that'll be still quite green. You can find fruit that'll be perfectly ripe. And sometimes you'll find uh, fruit that's actually starting to shrivel and raisin a little bit all within the same vine. So it's not the easiest grape variety to grow, uh, but in Sonoma, I think oftentimes they do some wonderful things with it. So just moderately deep in color. The aromatics on it, it is just red raspberry galore. And that's a characteristic that's very typical of some of the Sonoma Zinfandel. So I love the way this wine smells. It has that really bright, intense fruit character. On the palate, there is a lot of volume here. It's weighty, round, full, uh, very, very smooth, nice length on the back palate. I mean, everything about this wine is put together very, very well. Now, on the back label, it says it's from a, a place called Precision Wine Company. Now, over the last several months, I've been doing some work with uh, Tasting Panel magazine. I've been uh, tasting some wines and reviewing them for the magazine. I've had several wines come across uh, my table from this, this particular wine company. I think the wines are very, very solid. And when I saw this in Costco, I thought this is definitely worth a try. The value is fantastic. And if you're a fan of Zen, uh, this is definitely something to worth, uh, worth a shot. The wine is very well made from start to finish, and the value on it right now is just great. I hope this video provided some helpful guidance for your shopping experience at Costco. Hey, I'm going to be drinking a little Jigendas later tonight. Absolutely love this wine. I hope you're drinking something interesting as well, and please stop back again before too long. Cheers.